Well, welcome everybody to our online program on addiction and recovery from the Sunshine Coast Health Center up here in Powell River, BC. And we've been talking about Rob Ford. Everybody's been talking about Rob Ford. But in particular, uh, an article that appeared in the Star on what what would rehab be like if Rob Ford were to enter it? And then the description given in the article uh, basically saying um, he would have to follow rules, uh, his best thinking got him into rehab so he can't trust his thinking anymore, his life is completely undisciplined and chaotic. Uh, this kind of idea, and so that the uh, therapist in the facility would feel this uh, uh, moral obligation to take control of the client because the client is so out of control. That's it. And it, it was presented as if this was quite a reasonable way of conducting therapy, and that it's but this is what happens in therapy. And so our online program is to present a little different take, and maybe that's not what happens in all rehabs. And one of the things uh, that they talked about in the article was the idea that if Rob Ford were to enter treatment, he would be confronted by other clients and probably staff. Uh, it's generally called something along the lines of, uh, well, uh, we call you on your stuff, right? So if you're trying to lie or manipulate, you'll be called on it. You know, this is the idea. And, and so confrontation is, is seen as uh, an appropriate and acceptable style of, of counseling. And this idea that confrontation as a style of counseling is acceptable is, uh, is quite curious because we've done a lot of research on this. William Miller and William White actually have written at length uh, about this and quoted many, many studies that examine confrontation as a style of counseling. And no surprise to me and to a lot of people that this simply doesn't work very well. And in many cases could very easily be considered actually malpractice and that in the sense that you could actually harm clients through the confrontation. I'm thinking any number of people who are suffering from certain uh, uh, disorders other than the addiction, if you uh, use confrontation as a style of counseling, yeah, you could really, uh, uh, it, won't it won't help them, let's put it that way. This idea of confrontation uh, generally comes, again, it's this older idea that uh, one of the things that all addicts share is that they are in denial of their addiction. And the concept of denial is kind of kind of interesting. Um, it's actually been sort of warped today to include treatment resistance, although in its original form, uh, written up by a woman by the name of Anna Freud, who was Sigmund Freud's daughter, uh, as a defense mechanism, and it's an unconscious thing. I literally, I don't even know. So what the argument is for people with addictions is they don't even know they have a problem. So how do you break through someone's denial that they don't even know they have a problem when it's so crystal clear to everyone else they do? Well, the argument is, well, you have to confront them. So we're, gonna, we're just going to sort of browbeat them until they figure it out. So this idea of confrontation became very big in the addiction field. And again, uh, it's lasted for decades. But, uh, but to point out that a lot of modern therapy, a lot of modern rehabs, they don't actually practice this because of the science. The science has taught us that one, it doesn't work, and two, that it actually can har cause harm to people, which is uh, one thing that you never uh, is never acceptable on, in any code of ethics is to harm a client. Do everything, try to do good, but whatever you do, just don't harm the client. Right? So a lot of people really shy away from this confrontational counseling style simply because you know, it doesn't seem to work all that well and it, it could possibly harm people. So in, a, in, in rehabs, it's not necessarily the fact that people are going to call others on their stuff. Right? That may be that, again, with this idea we talked about last week of working with the client is a much more powerful tool we can use to help the client gain self-awareness, to understand what's going on with them, and to look at all their defense mechanisms. Anyway, uh, that's it for uh, this edition of our uh, online uh, program, and we'll be back next time with a wrap-up on our for, uh, Rob Ford uh, little video series here.